Hi, today we're back with another style tasting. We're delving into the category of American Porter and Stout, and we have the third of the children, I don't know, uh, 20C Imperial Stout. Yeah, cool. American American Porter and Stout. But with English an English beer. Stout. I don't yeah. understand, I don't get it. I don't get these guys. Yeah, the Imperial the Stout was a weird category, because it was, uh, um, well, I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about the history, but yeah, they, they threw that in there. I don't know why. And they yeah. call out the examples separately. They've got American examples and English examples. So we've got one of each. We've got Samuel Smith's Imperial Stout and then Yeti from Great Divide right up the road in just, Denver. Just up a piece. Have you ever had Yeti before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I may have. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there's many variations of Yeti I haven't had. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah, I know there's a lot, but yeah. I've had quite a few. Yeah, and yeah. they're all delicious yeah. is the thing. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, this category overall, we're looking at an intensely flavored big dark ale with a wide range of flavor balances and regional interpretations. Roasty burnt malt with deep dark or dried fruit flavors and a warming bittersweet finish. Despite the intense flavors, the components need to meld together to create a complex, harmonious beer, not a hot mess. Now, if you're wondering, the not a hot mess is, in fact, in the guidelines. I was just going to ask you if, you, yeah. if that was a copy-paste or if you were editorializing a little bit. But no, that is in the guidelines. Wow. And these, these, of course, are all straight from the guidelines. They had a little note in their history section or their comments section that said, uh, traditionally an English style, but it's currently much more popular and widely available in America where it's a craft beer favorite. Not a curiosity. Variations exist with English and American interpretations. Predictably, the American versions have more bitterness, roasted character, and finishing hops, while the English varieties reflect a more complex specialty malt character and a more forward ester profile. Hmm. Okay. So here in the U.S. we say hops. Well, that's kind of, the, I was thinking about that the other day, that's kind of the way it is for <clears throat> any variety that has an English and an American. Yeah, you yeah. Know, is, it, is it English? Oh, it's less hoppy, fewer ABV. Yeah. Like, low, lower ABV. Like, huh. Yeah. What's the ABV of their beers? It's like 4%. Let's go 8. <laughs> we, we, could, we could double that. We could double that. <laughs> we could easily double that. What's the ABV? <laughs> Oof. We'll triple it. Yeah. And actually, you'll notice that when we talk about the beer stats. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, oh, so oh, yeah. Samuel Smith, yeah. um, did you want to go? No, no, you do. Okay. Oh, well, port, yeah. Okay, so Samuel Smith, the Imperial Stout is from Tadcaster, North Yorkshire, England. It's 7% ABV and 35 IBU, which is a fairly, that's a good size beer. That's, that's, yeah. that's respectable. Yeah, and then Great Divide from Yeti is 9.5% ABV and 75 IBU, so almost twice the IBU, or I'm sorry, over twice oh, yeah. the IBU. This is, oh, this smells lovely. Oh, that, we had that oatmeal stout for the oatmeal stout tasting, and good night, that was a delicious beer. Oh. It smells I, like I poured a little heavy on yours. Yeah, no, so that's great. all you'll be getting tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can definitely see the difference in the head color. The Yetis is just really dark, and the Samuel Smiths. Samuel Smith, yeah, is kind of off-white tan. Yeah. Yeah, tan. I should say tan, yeah. But they're both holding their own. I mean, they're just, <clears throat> they're there. Oh, well, Samuel Smith's starting to go away a little bit. Yeah. But. Mmm. <clears throat> man, oh man. Yeah, so that's the... Definitely get the hops off the Yeti more than the Samuel Smith. I do, Smith. yeah. The Samuel Smith's a lot more fruity, more like plums. It's yeah. almost like a brandy. Yeah, and boozy. It's, yeah. 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 Which is strange for seven percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, I think that's <clears throat> so remember, the, remember the that with their oatmeal stuff too, yeah. it was like it smelled and tasted boozy and mm. it wasn't it was like six percent or yeah. something. It wasn't bad. So <clears throat> feed us on the history. So yeah, the history. I'll style it along, although not necessarily Continuous heritage. Okay, I just want to make sure that the it's a continuous, not con, con, contagious or contiguous <laughs> or contentious. I don't know. Contentious. So it traces roots to strong English porters brewed for export in the 1700s, and said to have been popular with the Russian imperial court. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, after the Napoleonic Wars interrupted trade, these beers were increasingly sold in England. So. 
I don't understand that. So, you mean increasingly sold to England as opposed to Exported Russia. to Russia, Got yeah. It. All right, I understand what they're saying. Yeah. All right, and the style eventually all but died out until being popularly embraced in the modern craft er beer era, both in England and as a revival, and in the United States as a reinterpretation or reimagination by extending the style with American characteristics. That's what we're talking about. Yep. Yes. So aroma. Yeah. Uh, for the aroma for the, this style, we're looking at something that's rich and complex, just like the flavor, uh, with a variable amounts of roasted greens, maltiness, fruity esters, hops, and alcohol. The roasted malt character can take on coffee, dark chocolate, or slightly burnt tones, and can be light to moderately strong. The malt aroma can be subtle to rich and barley wine-like, may optionally show a slight specialty malt character, like caramel, but this should only add complexity and not dominate. Fruity esters may be low to moderately strong and may take on a complex dark fruit like plums, prunes, raisins character. Yeah. Hop aroma can be very low to quite aggressive and may contain any hop variety. An alcohol character may be present but shouldn't be sharp, hot, or solventy. Aged versions may have a slight vinous, sorry, slight vinous. Is that how you say it? Vinous? I thought it was vinous. Vin vinous. Vinous. A slight vinous or port like or no, quality. Vin yeah, vinous. Yeah. yeah. But shouldn't be sour. The balance can vary with any of the aroma elements taking center stage. Not all possible aromas described need to be present. <laughs> Many interpretations are possible. And aging affects the intensity, balance, and smoothness of aromatics. Yeah. Right now, someone's coming up with a recipe of stout. It's like, what? We don't need them all. <laughs> do Forget it. <laughs> Man, talk about a lot going on. Yeah. Like, what, what I found interesting about this style was they, you know, they keep hitting on what it can be like when it's been aged for a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, which makes sense because if one if these are known for one thing, it's for yeah. being able to. Stick them around for a while. Stick them in your cellar and I'll try them in a couple yeah. of years. Exactly. So yeah, I'm still getting the the plums, prunes, kind of, that's really just jumping out at yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. With the, and it's nice and sweet, roasty. And then the Eddie, like you said, it was it's more... More hops, more hoppy. roast, coffee. Yeah, yeah different kind of roast coffee, yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the appearance, here's a shocker, uh, color may range from very dark reddish brown to jet black, so it could go from dark dark to dark dark dark, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So I get a little bit of a red tinge from the Samuel Smiths, but the Yeti is sucking up all the light. Yeah, it's like a little black. Not hole. even light can escape from the Yeti. <laughs> Uh, a deep tan to dark brown head. So as we discussed, the, the Yeti had a nice brownish head, and then the, the Samuel Smith head. Which is still hanging on. It's yeah, stuck like it's, glue to the glass. Yeah, it is. Man, that's that's persistent, as they say. Generally has a well-formed head, although head retention may be low to moderate. Okay, Samuel Smith. And high alcohol and viscosity may be visible in legs when beer is swirled in glass. Well, I'll test that one out. Those yeah. are kind of full. Thanks. So the flavor of these beers, uh, we're looking at something rich, deep, complex, and frequently quite intense with variable amounts of roasted malt grain, malt slash grains, maltiness, fruity esters, hop bitterness, and flavor, and alcohol. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> right. There's booze in these! It's gonna, it's gonna taste super dark yeah. and might have be high in alcohol. Yeah, wow. So uh, medium to aggressively high bitterness, medium low to high hop flavor, any variety. Moderate to aggressively high roasted malt grain flavors can suggest bittersweet or unsweetened chocolate, cocoa, and or strong coffee. A slightly burnt grain, burnt currant, or terry character may be evident. Fruity esters may be low to intense and can take on a dark fruit character, raisins, plums, or prunes. Yeah. Well, check, we check, check, check. I have to be honest. I don't know if I've ever had a burnt currant. I'd be hard pressed to know what a currant was, let alone if I've had one that was been burnt. Yeah, I usually just fry mine till they're just lightly just brown. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's like a fig or grape, isn't it? I know I've had currant um, beers. Yeah. Yeah, like lambic. There's a lambic style that's currant. It could be. I thought they were like raisins, but from a different. 
Oh, that could be true. Yeah. Like a dried fruit or something. Yeah. Man, can't. I don't know what a currant <coughs> is. I can't pronounce vinous. <laughs> vinous? <laughs> I still can't pronounce it. Wow, that has a lot of just dark sugars in it. Really nice roasty character to it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's something there too, and I, I just can't pick it up. But <clears throat> definitely a lot of that kind of plum, plum flavor. I guess I think that's what it, it's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, and I, I, the roast malt is what stands out most to me, and I get a little bit of the astringency oh, yeah. at the end, but not nearly as much as you'd expect no. being, being this dark. Yeah, no, it's really smooth. Because I know a lot of stouts tend to, you know, a lot of times you'll pick, especially oatmeal stout, mm. you know, you, they use so much of that dark roasted malt that you get that astringent character yeah. to it. Yeah. And I know a lot of times when these are young, they can have a lot of hops in them. And yeah. they kind of fade, you know, like the one we brewed. Yeah, you know, yeah, no kidding. Fades yeah. over time. Well, you have to put so many hops in there to overcome the, the sweet, since there's it's such a it finishes so high in gravity. Makes sense. And Great Divide, they probably had a buy one get one free, hop vendor. Yeah, they've got a lot of hops in the Yeti. Has a lot of yeah. bitterness right up front. Hmm. Wow. You know, I never noticed that before drinking Yeti until I had it in the comparison. But yeah, that's the hop is really yeah. forward in that. It lingers a bit too. The bitterness kind of hangs around a little bit. Not unpleasantly. No. I mean, you can pick out the pine in there too, besides the bitterness. At least I'm getting the pine and citrus mm -hmm. in the background. I'm gonna get me citrus. Get the pine. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. <clears throat> it it still amazes me. I mean, this has a boozy quality to the flavor too, and it's a whopping seven percent. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's something in there that I wish I had a better word for. The Sam Smith? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so there's a little bit more flavor. I didn't realize it was so, uh, it should be surprising that there's so much flavor that they have to take a long time to. So the malt backbone can be balanced and supportive to rich and barley wine-like. Uh, rich and barley wine-like. And they op uh, optionally show some supporting caramel, bready, or toasty flavors. See, what happened is we didn't advance the slide. I totally forgot there's a second slide. Well, yeah, <laughs> normally there's only one. Yeah, yeah. So There really is. The paragraph on the flavor is like, is like huge. huge. Yeah, no, I bet. Well, that, that again, <clears throat> doesn't surprise me. Uh, the palate and finish can vary from relatively dry to moderately sweet. Hmm. Usually with some lingering roastiness, hot bitterness, and warming character. <laughs> that was, that's pretty funny. It could be... Dry to sweet. Yeah. It could be bitter to sweet finish. It could linger or it couldn't. You know, it's like, so like, yeah. No wonder so many people brew stouts. It's just like, yeah. It's well, and I think both of these finish really pretty dry. <clears throat> Samuel Smith slightly more than the Yeti to me. You think? So, and then the last segment is uh, the balance and intensity of flavors can be affected by aging, with some flavors becoming subdued over time and some aged, vinous or port like qualities developing. I just wanted you to read that for the. Yeah, you know, good. Let you practice. Well, I, you were picking up the slack for me because <laughs> flavor was my slide. I totally forgot about it. No, that's. Yeah, that's, don't mind. <laughs> vinous, vinous, vinous. <laughs> Someone's going to comment. Please send the correct pronunciation. No, that's wrong. Info at cobrutalk.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So mouthfeel. Full to very full, uh, full to very full bodied and chewy with velvety, luscious texture. Although the body may, be, may decline with long condition. <clears throat> Gentle, smooth warmth from alcohol should be present and noticeable. 
but not a primary characteristic. In well-conditioned versions, the alcohol can be deceptive. I think that's yeah. describes that. Uh, should not be syrupy or under under attenuated. Well, so I was expecting the opposite of that. Is that the alcohol can be deceptive, like it'll sneak up on you. You're like, hey, this is a nice sweet no, drink. Twelve yeah. <laughs> percent. <laughs> Well, it, it might be both, too. Yeah. I, I suppose. That's true, though, yeah. Yeah, because it's, I mean, he's like, oh, this isn't so bad for a stout because it's nice and sweet. And, you know, next thing you know, it's, you're under the table. But I don't know. And then mm. carbonation may be low to moderate depending on age and conditioning. So, yes. Yeah, that head comes right back up in the Yeti. Sam Smith's, too, but not nearly as much. Not nearly as much as the... Yeah. I don't really see too many legs in either one of them, so yeah. it's not oily. Mine has a supernova in it. <laughs> Which makes sense since it's a black hole. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should probably do this one. So the vital stats for this one is the original gravity can be 1.075 to 1.115. And that's a big beer. It is a big beer. And IBUs can be 50 to 90. Final gravity is going to be 1.018 to 1.030. So it's going to it's going to leave a little bit of sugar behind to a fair amount of sugar behind. And the SRM is going to be 30 to 40. ABV is about 8 to 12 percent. Yep, which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, 30 to 40. That's going to be. Yeah, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be black. Yeah. I don't have my dial. My wheel here, yeah. My SRM wheel. I thought I brought it over and left it. No, it's sitting by my desk. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> I was just happened to be looking at the recipe that we, that stout that we brewed, and uh, for the style, you know, it has mm -hmm. you know, between thirty and forty. That's like fifty-three. Yeah. So it like just blew it out of the water. So. Oh, which one was that though? The black's beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So which? Because I think I did. I want to say. I think I, that right proper I made, I think that one has a hundred IBUs in it. Oh. And you can't tell. Oh, I don't no. think. I mean, that thing's motor oil. Well, I was talking about SRM. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, so that has a hundred IBUs. IBUs. Yeah. But yeah, like so we're talking, if it had a high finishing gravity or final gravity, then. Yeah, well, and you know, the, the bitterness offsets the sweetness, so, yeah. I mean, the, the higher your gravity is, and like Jesse said, the more residual sugars you have left over, the more bitterness you need. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cloyingly sweet if, if you didn't have a lot, because, yeah, we were surprised how many, I mean, I wasn't there when, when you brewed that right proper, but yeah. the other stout, it was like, how many hops are going in this? Holy crap, yeah. it's going to be a hop bomb, and it wasn't. Yeah. So, you could tell, you could taste them, but it wasn't, wasn't like an IPA, you know. <laughs> Double dry hopped I <laughs> yep. DDH. So if you're in Colorado or if you can get your hands on it, I highly suggest Yeti. Um, they make yes. a lot of variations. They've got Mexican chocolate Yeti, s'mores Yeti, yeah. a couple barrel aged. Probably peanut, do they have peanut butter? Yeah, peanut butter. We, yeah. I just had the peanut butter one. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of Yetis. <coughs> great brewery. They make great beer. Um, this is the second Samuel Smith's beer I've had, and uh, I they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. They're really good. You know why they've been in business so long? Yeah, for, what, 150, 200 years? Yeah, but uh, what's interesting is even the bottle says it was fermented in Yorkshire Squares, which is, you know, they have big open fermenters there. Oh, yeah. With stone, you know, just in a room. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> you just walk by. It's like a pool for a beer. Oh, can you imagine how it smells? Everyone out of the pool! Oh, <laughs> I just stand in there and just... Just smell. It's just set up a lawn chair. <laughs> we need to bottle this and sell it as men's cologne. Or actually, women's... Or maybe women's... I guess that's sexist. Because men or women can like the smell true. of fermenting. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But I'd buy, I'd buy some beer-scented... <laughs> Beard oil. Yeah. I guess that might get you in trouble though. <clears throat> that guy smells like beer every day he comes in. <laughs> License and registration, step out of the car. <laughs> oh no, it's my oil. It's, it's my the, beard oil. It's my it's my cologne. It's my cologne, old yeah. New Yorkshire. Whatever, sir, put your hands on the car. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I was I know there there was another stat I was trying to think of. 
I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah, both of those. So yeah, and they're Thumbs so up. different. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's the yeah. thing is like hoppy, not hoppy. Yeah, and that's why we've tried to pick one of the the English examples and the American examples. Yeah, yeah that was a good good call. Definitely. So, if you got any ideas for future shows, uh, if you like the new setup, this was done with our new camera. So we're hoping the audio. We haven't actually edited and put anything out yet with the new audio setup, but hopefully it works out. Um, if you have any feedback, would like us to do anything, questions, you name it, just. Leave a comment down below, leave a comment on the blog, send us an email, whatever you want. Yep. So, yeah, until next time. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs> <laughs>